This is an all new tubeless pump prototype that could be coming. I am here in Toronto at the MedTech conference and I got to check this thing out and learn more about it. It can last up to seven days and it can hold up to 500 units of insulin. I sat down with the CEO of Pocket Clinic to learn more. Amir, thank you for coming on the show. Yo, thank you very much for having me here. Of course. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. Yeah. You, so you surprised me the other day. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize when I came here and we would meet that you would have a prototype of the yeah. pump that you've been working on yeah. on you. So I got to see it and I was like, we need to sit down. We need to talk, we need to talk about this. Yeah. So it's obviously a very early prototype. Mm -hmm. How long have you been working on this? Uh, we work on this project, I can say for about five years, but we cooperate our company in 2021 in Canada and uh, we start this project for, uh, I can say, for five years. Okay, well, tell me about Pocket Clinic. I hadn't heard of it. Mm. What, where does it come from? Was it specifically created around this device? It's interesting, because we start this project in, when I was in, living in Brazil. Uh, I found the difficulties over there with the high and expensive uh, treatment for diabetes. I, when I was pursuing my PhD, I started this company over there and we developed the first proof of concept and then we moved to Canada for the better opportunities and also for funding this project in 2022. But uh, the idea came from that market and I love the, uh, the market of Brazil, Brazil also. So that is our journey. The other thing is that in my family, insulin dependent happened as well. My grandmother had that issue uh, last couple of years of uh, her life. And also my father is a type two diabetes. So I fam I'm familiar with this situation, the challenge of multi-daily injections. Yeah, so, it so it's, it's close to you, this project. Yes, motivates me to find a solution. Yeah. yeah. Now, your, your device is, it's pretty neat looking. I see you have one right here. Can yeah. you kind of explain to us yeah. how this device works, what these different parts are? Yeah, um, uh, the, the device itself, it includes two parts, the cartridge or reservoir. Uh, we designed this um, based on the needs of patient. We come up that the available pump doesn't have that sufficient uh, and volume or capacity because, uh, for instance, type 2 and type 1, they have a difficulties of our, uh, the, the use of consume different volume of insulin. So we were thinking to find an uh, alternative for them. And even though we want to make it easier for them, that's uh, because normally they use multi-daily injections or the pump with the huge tube, one, me one meter of tube that carry always. So the, the pump includes the cartridge and, and the electronics. So why we separate these two parts? Because we want to make it cost effective for them. And we want to make the electronics not to throw it away. And also because the battery itself is toxic, we want to make it reusable. And then we separate the cartridge and reservoir and the electronics reusable as well. Another side is that the, all the infusion set or launching the mechanism, it's inside the cartridge. So you don't need to use separate actuator to insert the infusion set. So integrate it all in one solution and also reusable as electronic and the cartridge itself is a disposable for seven days. So the device itself, you're saying that the bottom part, yeah. is, is that what will like inject a cannula or there's an applicator that's used to put that on? No. Okay, how, how does someone put this on? The, the mechanism, we use the technology that automatically insert by pressing the button on your application, the needle, the, the spring uh, loaded uh, needle hop released and the needle goes and inject to, the, to your body. So okay, you, so similar to what people are experiencing with an Omnipod, exactly. they put it on, exactly. they use an application and it puts it. So this exactly. pump will have a yeah, device inserts. that inserts. Yes. Exactly. Okay, gotcha. Can you kind of open this up for us? Tell us a little bit about, so is this top part this is the cartridge? No, this is the electronic this part. This is the electronic. It's reusable part. Okay. And we use the um, pumping mechanism. It's a roller to making the dispensing. And this is the cartridge. And uh, we, this model that I have is the capacity up to 500 units, which is 5 ml. And uh, with the uh, actuator or needle insertion inside. You connect it easily with the twisting. And it's also waterproof itself, we don't need to worry about taking showers or swimming 
because uh, the electronic itself is covered, but there isn't any insertion inside or leak, leakage water for the cartridge as well. Okay, gotcha. And you were telling me, so this bottom part, the cartridge, yes. this can hold anywhere from, there's, there's two sizes, right? Like a one to 300 and then a 300 to 500 exactly. unit. This is the model for the th uh, one to three. It's a one millimeter thickness difference. It's oh, really, wow. yeah. This is the uh, smaller one. So this is a little bit smaller. Exactly. And it holds one to 300 units. Exactly. This one's three to five. Exactly. Uh, why we want to, because you know, if you're familiar with the Medtronic, that they have two sizes uh, back in the day, they need to increase the volume of the device. But with our design, you connect the cartridge with the higher volume with the same electronics. Just only the thickness of this cartridge increase for about one to two millimeter. Okay. Right. Now tell me about the decision making of this. The base of this is somewhat rounded. It's not flat. Yes. Tell me about the, the decision making in, in, in that shape. Yeah, um, uh, while we were designing this, we um, figured it out uh, the, our body is a curve. It's not, the, you cannot find any sur flat surface. Back of your arm and also your belly or your back, you cannot find any flat surfaces. What we want to do, we want to increase the area that this pump is attached to the body. We have, uh, we designed with different uh, curve that we come up with one at least optimized curve that you can fit everywhere in your body, that it fits uh, perfectly and you don't have any gap. Because why we choose this curve? Because if it's flat, some part of it is disconnected from the body and it happens when you hit the wall or somewhere that is disconnected the whole pump from. It. What we wanna do have the whole surfaces attached to your body and there isn't any disconnection. So we want to make it curve and also make it feel smaller than compared to other. Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about how the pump that I wear, its edges aren't adhered. It kind of, there's this like looseness to it uh, so that it stays on, whereas this one's a little more ergonomic. It's yes. going to wrap around curvy, exactly. all the curvy parts of our bodies. Yes. So when it comes to staying on, this thing um, you're, you're aiming for, or you say that this will have seven day wear yeah. Now explain how that's possible. Um, you know, we, and we see we see Medtronic. They yes. have a new infusion set. Yes. Tandem's working on an infusion set that lasts seven days as well. Yeah. Yeah. How is this avoiding, I guess, scar tissue or anything like that? Yeah. Um, Why we were seeking or increasing or extending the time wearability time, we found one adhesion that is used for other chronic disease patients can wear last for 14 days. We talk with the manufacturing in the U.S. that they provide some sample for us that. It, even though the, it is the cream, we modify it to put it on a film so we can make a thin layer of that. They call it hydrocolored. So used for wound uh, treatment and also it doesn't increase the rash or redness around the, uh, around the wound. We are using that to extend the wearability time to seven days. Another thing is that by Medtronic just defined that, okay, the infusion and reservoir that is lasts for seven days, so we don't worry about the insulin uh, efficiency or uh, uh, outside of the fridge that you can wear it uh, very easily. Yeah, what about when it comes to battery on this, where does the battery live? Mm -hmm. Is it the outer shell and how is it being, I guess, charged? Uh, our device is mm, charged wirelessly. Okay. And uh, the battery is inside the electronics. We design the battery itself, and it has the higher capacity that keeps it at least for seven days. So we want to ensure that this device at least has the juice inside to keep it for seven days. Otherwise, it doesn't worth it to where it's uh, less than that. But it's wirelessly charged, and also the capacity, we're quite sure and believe that it's keep for seven days where a bit. Yeah, yeah, and seven days is a long time. Yeah. What is the technology behind how this pump works that allows for it to last so long? I, I know you said it was it was something called MEMS. Is yes. that is that correct? What, what is can you explain to us what yeah. that is and, and how it works? Yeah we uh, we design actually we developed it in our company the the, the MEMS technology it's micro electromechanical system the piezo called normally everybody. The P the piezo? Yes, that, okay, the piezo, that, so yes. that's, I learned that that was, in, the Omnipod has that, that 
That's what makes this, the noises from it. It's not actually a speaker, it's, it's a vibration exactly. sound. Exactly. Okay, so how are you? Uh, the, uh, what we use, it's the ultrasonic uh, mm, uh, wave to produce this rotation for this ro uh, roller. And it doesn't make any sound because it's out of the hearing, uh, hearing uh, uh, frequency, so you don't feel anything. By using the piezo, that it gives us the capability to reduce the power consumption and increase the variability for seven days. So that is the differentiate from the DC motor or brushless DC motor is conventional pump used because they use the current and then that you consume the battery and can't keep it or last for seven days. Okay. Now, when it comes to this outer shell with the, the electronics, how long does that last? Like, what's its lifespan? Mm -hmm. um, we plan to provide two of these for patients. Each of them uh, can last for two years. In, in total, it's four years capability, which means that you don't need to worry at least for these two pump for four years, and then we can replace it for a new one or a new version of that. Okay. Now, this is a pretty early prototype. Yeah. It doesn't, at least from, from what I see, it, it, there's, the electronics aren't necessarily in yeah. it. So where are you now in the development? The development, yeah. yeah. Well, we did the uh, benchtop test for the mechanism of delivery. We got a very accurate uh, result. We finished the manufacturing design and we are planning to uh, design freeze in four, four to five months, which means that we are going to submit our FDA uh, next year. And I believe we can, um, everything goes well, uh, and uh, we can launch it in 2026. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, I've got some follower questions. Yeah. I put out a social yeah. video yeah. on this and asked them for their questions. Yeah. So. Age. What age are you aiming for? Are you going to start somewhere and then expand it or kind of? Uh, normally, it's better to um, have the range of 12 to elderly people. But I, I saw that the followers said that they're for using for toddlers. Oh, we need to test it on um, um, kids and toddlers. But the good thing is that with the lower volume and also the capability of track for the parents, they can wear it easily. And it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't need to carry the big devices for them. Firstly, we focus for teen and kids and also elderly people, yeah. but we need to test it and get the clearance, FDA clear. Yeah, I mean, size-wise, this would be awesome for, for yeah. children. Yes. What about uh, automated insulin? Is this built in a way for a closed loop system where it connects to a CGM, is that your goal like on launch to have it do that or what, what's your kind of plans there? Uh, our strategy is uh, clear. We want to get the clearance based on the pump, but our application has the capability to connect with any CGM available on the market. And uh, so you can connect it directly to the app and then see the glucose. We don't want to go for the class three medical device because it, it needs a higher cl clinical study. But our vision or our mission is to, uh, to integrate the CGM in one single device. In our company, we are developing a CGM as well to attach to the bottom of this cartridge that you can read and uh, do the uh, closed loop mechanism in one single device. You don't need to worry different devices with the different life cycle or life variability. Okay. And what about where? Where are you seeking getting approval for this first? Uh, plan for FDA first. Uh, it's more clear and robust. And then uh, we have some plan because we have a company in Latin America, in Brazil as well. We are planning to go for Latin America as well. And this is the next uh, step in our company. And uh, after that, Asia, uh, which is the huge market. Mm -hmm. Europe as well. Also, but the CE is really complicated at this moment. Yeah. What are your expectations or hopes for the future of the insulin pump market? Where do you, where do you think we're headed? The thing is that uh, the insulin pump market um, has a, some gap because for the automatic, in, from my perspective as an engineer, uh, you can control, you should provide some solution to make it easy uh, for diabetes, life of diabetes. Uh, what I mean is that we need to provide some solution that gives them uh, control the better of the insulin or the glucose in their body. Because right now you can see the, we launched a rocket and control it back in, the, in Earth, 
oh, we cannot control the insulin <laughs> level or the glucose <laughs> level. Why? Uh, mm. I believe dual hormone pump is a huge opportunity to have the closed loop mechanism. And another approach is, is that with this uh, uh, footprint, we can provide the dual hormone as well. And uh, with the capacity of five milliliter. And also it is another approach for our company as well. So I believe the, um, I can say dual hormone to have a better control for a diabetes. And at the end, I hope that we can find some cure for the uh, diabetes. But what I, right now I can see, it's really, really long journey to find a cure. And well, we need to find a better alternative solution for that. That is the main, main part. So you know, dual hormone can be a big difference in, in the controlling the glucose level. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming on the show. It was very exciting and a surprise yeah. uh, to, to check this out. If you want to see more content like this, keep it here by subscribing to my page. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I'm Justin, and I'll talk to you later.